So at St Ursula's, how it works is in year, um, I'll take them in year 11 and I take them through to year 12. But in year 11, the class might have about 10, 15 students in it. But at this time of the year, when they're in year 12, um, you're looking at a class close to like 26, 27. So what you could do earlier on with the group, you can't really do in, in the larger scheme of things. But with the new classrooms that we've got, we've been able to um, combine things. So I work with Karen Horder. She um, teaches the other Catholic Studies class. And I suppose what I try and do in the classroom is be as creative as I possibly can. Um, I don't know about your discussions, but a lot of the discussion we had on our table was about how it seems to be very similar to um, the Year 9 unit that they do. And sometimes if you go in there and you tackle it from that angle, you've already lost them. So um, what I, I created these last night, just... Um, Great Southland of the Holy Spirit, the song. Okay, so I downloaded the film here and um, Louise can share this with you afterwards. So it's got, I just start the unit with that and they've got the words up there and all the different images that are unique to Australia. And then um, I give them, I hand it over to the class and basically um, they have to nominate a student who will, be, um, it's, a, it's a class project. So the student um, in the class has to delegate to others what they're going to do. So. There's a spreadsheet here that explains to them what they need to do. It's going to come up. Each student gets a line and they have to find an image. So this is about trying to get them to work together. Um, so they have to create an image. And by the end of it, basically, someone's edited it and it's all checked off. They then have to present it to a Year 7 class. Um, so the one, it's the one project. They present it to a Year 7 class, to a Year 9 class, and what was it? And I think there was another one that I, I thought of it went with. Oh, yeah, and Year 10 for major Christian denominations. So they present it to them for those classes to use it for prayer when they're doing ways people pray or praying with the liturgy and um, Australian church history. So that was one way which to get the class all to work together. Um, I then move into a, um, what I call creative imagery. And um, I basically get them to relax and go into a meditative state, hopefully. And they're just simply laying, um, you know, laying on the floor in their chair listening. And I place them in the scene of they're at a party that they've been to on the weekend and they've introduced to a whole lot of new people. In this room, there's people look all different. There's boys, there's girls, there's a whole range of different um, cultures there. And they're introduced to a person and the person says to, you, says to them, I'm a spiritual person, but I'm not religious. And then I guide them through um, what do they look like, what do they do in their spare time, what do they think about, what music, musicians do they listen to, what books do they read, um, what's their social network like, so what apps are they using, how many followers or friends do they have, what's their favourite website, um, what do they think about on a daily basis, what pictures do they upload onto their Instagram account, who do they follow on Twitter, and then what do they tweet about. So they're there, and then they're thinking about all these things. And then the next person they meet at the party, um, first line they say is, I'm a religious person. And I go through those questions with them as well. So I'm guessing that they're two very different people that they've imagined in their head. I then, um, I then you know, bring them back into the room and all that sort of stuff, and they have to record in silence on their own by drawing or describing just using words, so it doesn't have to be a paragraph, it doesn't have to be anything that's going to be handed up and marked. Um, what was the first person like on one side of the page and on the other side, what's the other person like? And then they go into groups and they discuss this in their groups and then we have big class discussion and then I just sit, look, depending on your relationship with students, I would say to them, well, did any of you picture me at that party as that person being religious? And sometimes, or most of the time, I think that they would go, no, not really. So in their head, they've got, you know, a, um, an older person and all those sort of things. So it's just to try and challenge them where they're at with their own faith. Um, then I, would, I, would, I always start with a glossary and I also go to the um, scriptures that are in here. It does specifically say here um, that you won't be using it as much as you would be in the, other, um, in the other topics. But I think it's really important that the students are able to identify that even though, you know, we're here and now, these scripture words are still relevant to what the church is doing today. And that goes back with what we were saying. So I, you know, I'd come up, I'd put the scripture up on the, on the screen for them. And they'd have to identify, because it's quite, it's clear in here, 
they have to identify whether it's about mission, whether it's about social welfare, or whether it's about um, education. We were talking about the significance of the Sabbath and how that has changed to a degree in, um, in society today. So that would be another area that I'd pick up on because in the, it talks about Exodus. But I would be very, very, I would be stressing to them, and it's very disappointing sometimes when they do get to year 11 and 12, and they don't realise that the Sabbath is actually the Friday, Saturday, whereas Christians have their Sabbath, so to speak, their day of rest on the Sunday because that's the day the Lord rose. So that's always a bit of an eye-opener for them. But, and then there's the ecumenical um, aspect there as well in the, um, in the scriptures. In Year 10, what we do with church history is we break it up and we have... It's a little bit like project-based learning where they delegated a particular aspect of the church that they have to research. So with this particular... Um, with this topic, how we do it is... Um, back. OK, so I've just taken what we do in Year 10... Okay, so it's, it's a project-based approach. Um, so how did Christianity arrive in Australia and what has been the trend in statistics in regards to adherence and expression? So if you look at the first band there, it actually doesn't say um, Catholic. It just talks about Christian denominations. So you're picking up on what they've done in Year 10 as well as what they've done in Year 9. So um, they have that... That's their overarching question, so to speak. They go into groups and they have to create a digital resource that's going to be able to teach the other students what that particular religious tradition is about. Um, and they're required... Um, you know, they all have a role that's clearly outlined there. So I just um, describe, when the, um, describe the Christian religion. OK, when did the religion arrive in Australia? How have their, statistic, their statistics or the number of parents um, trended? Um, what has been their impact on the Australian landscape? So how has the landscape in Australia, how, how, it looks, how has it changed? How has the religion contributed to society in Australia today? So you'd be looking there, trying to get them to get significant people. Um, as a visitor to Australia, how would I know that this faith was active in Australia today? So you'd be picking up on um, services that they provide, so hospitals, um, aged care. Um, and the last question, um, what is this faith's view or teaching on Aboriginal reconciliation? And I, I clearly put their um, use sources. A lot of, a lot of what... Um, I think that there's a whole lot of scope in this unit to bring in um, Indigenous issues and also um, how, the, how the church is responding and how other churches are responding to, um, to reconciliation in Australia today. And I suppose because we've just... We've just um, had Reconciliation Week as well. It should be in their format, forefront. In saying that, at the very beginning when I talked about the um, song, I would go through an acknowledgement of country and a part of that, a part of that comp a component of that, pre uh, that class project there is that they have to use images that are Indigenous. And they have to use some um, images that are Indigenous. Um, Going from there, I know that in the past... Yeah, I'd, I'd go to a glossary. I'd create a glossary. I always create a glossary for the topic and then a glossary for the board of studies. So I'd go through... They still have to write down what describe means, but I'd ask them to write a question on what we're doing in class using that, using that verb. OK, so um, trying to build... Because the students that are choosing Catholic studies, sometimes they're choosing it because they um, have so many units... And other times they're choosing it because they've got just enough units or they're not getting an ATAR or they're not nominating to get an ATAR or something like that. But you still want them to get that... They still need to have the skill base so that they can um, tackle the HSE and the questions that they need to do. So that's why I um, put in the Board of Studies um, component of the glossary as well. Um, looking at that project there, I would probably do the same... I would do the same thing for the different charisms so that each group would have to present a charism. What always goes with project-based learning is the learning log. So they would have... I've just taken it from... So they would have this learning log here. And the idea is that once they've made the project, once they've made the, um, the film or whatever you said, however they've decided to... Um, 
present, uh, how they decide to put their information. It goes into a shared folder where everybody has access to it. They're then given time to go through and look at those presentations and then each individual student completes this learning log. Um, and, you know, using dashboard, you just place this into their folder and you can constantly check where they're at to in regards to their learning log. Um, dashboard's been fantastic in that sense, that you can actually keep a track of it without them having to bring in pieces of paper or say, oh, my computer's dead, it's on my computer. It's always got to be in that, um, in that part of um, their Google Drive. Um, I did put down the bottom there a life skills component because, you know, and only the classroom teacher and the school knows, you know, to what level that student can achieve that particular outcome. So I placed there some individuals because that's sometimes a little bit easier for them to um, access and to research the information. So there are a couple of ways. Um, and in looking at the unit just before when um, Louise was going through it, you could actually do the whole course on bands in this particular format. So then each group's making something and then from, like, you know, you might have a larger group, so five, but then from that you'd make, I, I'd go to making the other groups up where there's one from each group and they have to teach the other students what they've learnt, what they've learnt about the process. And um, whenever I set up a project like this, I always have a number of links. Oh, sorry. I always have a number of... Um, websites in a document that they have access to, in a document that they have access to, to, to get that information, because it makes it easier for them to know the standard to, um, to, to what you're um, expected to go to. So, for instance, now that Louise is, uh, when Louise shares the, um, the census data, I'll be able to put that in there. I had some census data, but it was um, way too old. Um, so. And the links keep updating as well. And the students, because the students have access to it, they can then place what they've found, if they find it worthwhile, onto there. And I suppose I just wanted you to have a discussion. How would you um, set an assessment task for this, based on those outcomes? Like, all of this, all these projects that they do, that's fine. But then how do you get a marking criteria that meets perfectly to every single one? And if it's group-based, all those sorts of things. So how, how would you assess this topic? So if you just want to talk amongst yourselves for two minutes, how would you assess this topic in one whole, one whole task? What ideas have we got so far from just a table? Okay, so a test, like multiple choice or just? Okay, yeah. Anything, anyone else have a suggestion? Just a topic. How would you assess it? Yeah. It's similar to what I'm going to show you this afternoon, but I would probably get them to like give some sort of question for each of the tasks that they have to write a response to. So, like, so they have to give their their work, their you know, somehow you just have to work on But I'd probably get them to how how I would be thinking of assessing it. Um, I would write one question. I would give them a stimulus, I would write one question, asking them to synthesise the information that they've learnt. Yeah. So um, trying to see, like, they can know things off by heart and if I, set a, if I set a class test, they might go really well in that section, which is the one that they did, but then if they haven't done their learning log to the degree which is required, they're not going to go very well in the others and they may not care that much about that. But if they only have an unseen question which requires them to synthesise and bring in all of the information that they've learnt throughout the whole unit, that's when you're going to know what their understanding is of the topic. So you might specifically say they need to talk about a particular issue, they need to talk about two, the arrival of two different... So you'd write, you know, and, yeah, you'd write a task that managed to get them to do that. The other thing, and I just thought of it then, is um, an empathy task could also work. An empathy task could also work based on one of those bands. So um, in, 
in particular, you, um, you'd be the person, you know, even uh, listening to you talk about the priest that had to hold the hand, like trying to build that, th their ability, it's, it's trying to get them to write as well because we want to get them to write. So that's why I would go from doing all these fun play activities in class, which still has teacher-directed content. So before I'd go in, I'd teach a lesson on each of the bands and then I'd hand it over to them. As long as, and I would pre-warn them that there's going to be an assessment at the end that has every component, that, that will draw on all the information that they learn independently as well as in their group. I like a noisy classroom.